um, to skip a little bit ahead. I am not reading the section you were reading, okay? I'm leaving that to you. That's going to be yours, Griffin. But we are going to read the be very beginning of Parshat Ve'etchanan for a very important reason. This is a moment that um, Moses is with the people of Israel, and they are standing on the, the banks of the Jordan River, and it, they've been wandering for 40 years, and Moses was reflecting on that experience, talking to, to the kids and grandkids of those who came out of Egypt. I thought, here I am, I've been here for 20 years, that's half of the time. And there is something in what Moses is going to say and this experience that really caught my attention that is part of my blessing and my awareness of what this Shabbat means. Um, and so that's why I am sharing that section. It'll make sense in a little while when I get there. I also do want to note that there are two other um, elements to, as I stand here, because we've read from this Torah with countless students. I've read from these Torah scrolls countless times. Um, but I'm wearing, the talit I'm wearing is actually my talit from my bar mitzvah. And um, the, my parents got this for me probably early 1980s. And when I became bar mitzvah in 1987, my, this was around my shoulders. This was a gift from my parents. I kept it with me all of those years. I didn't wear it very much. Um, finally, when I got into rabbinical school, I needed a talit, so I took it back out. As my children started to get old enough to become bar and bat mitzvah, to become adults in this community, I realized that the tzitzit were starting to fail, that the tzitzit were starting to break off. And so I was also started to get very interested in tying tzitzit. And so for, when Anna became bat mitzvah, um, we tied tzitzit. I tied the first one, and each one of my children helped me with one of the other four. So I stand before you on this anniversary is I'm lifting Torah before our community and sharing this moment with Moses, surrounded by my parents, surrounded by my family and my kids. And the last is a yad. This is not just any yad. Griffin, do you recognize this type of yad? What is this type of yad? So each of our bar and bat mitzvah students, they have an opportunity to make a yad for themselves. It's a gift. Um, from the Temple Men's Club, um, and we have these incredible kits and beads, and um, I have the opportunity to make one that I use up here on the bima. And it's a reminder that even as I am carrying my family, how wonderful it is that I get the sweetness of being able to share Torah with so many students. And it's a reminder, I hope, Griffin, when you see me holding this, that just as you're learning Torah and you're challenged by it, don't worry, even your rabbi, been here for 20 years, and I'm still learning Torah and challenged by Torah all the time. And so thank you for joining me for this moment. Are you ready? So I am reading, um, we are in um, Deuteronomy chapter 4, sorry, chapter 3. And I'm actually reading starting with verse 23. And is it coming up? Yep. Now, here's the last piece, Griffin. You get to call me to Torah. Okay? Are you ready? So you're going to repeat after me. Ya'amod. La'aliyah. Harav. Michael. Zechariah. Ben. Harav. Ru'udain. Udvor. As Griffin calls me forward to Torah, I offer this blessing. Barachu et Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leulam Vaed. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bacharbanu Mikol Amim. Venatan Lanu et Torato. Baruch Atah Adonai Notein HaTorah. Ve'etchanan, El Adonai. And Moses, he went and he pleaded for grace before God. Ve'etahi in that time, Lemur, saying, Adonai Hashem, Ata hachiloti, hachilota, leharota, leharot et avdecha, 
God, you've, you, you've been um, letting me witness, you've been letting your service servant witness et good lecha the et yadecha chazaka, all of your greatness and all of your strength. Asher, mi el bashamay muvaret, who can compare to you in the heavens of the earth? Asher yasek maasecha uchvurotecha, who can, can compete with you with all of your deeds and all of your mightiness? Erbena, the er et haaret tova asher beever hayardain. But I plead with you, let me see the land, that good land that we're crossing the Jordan, Hahar Hatov, Hazet, that good mountain that we're going to, Halevnon, and even the Lebanon. The Yidda Ber Adonai be Lemanchem, don't um don't punish me on their account. Lo the Lo Shama Eli, but you didn't listen to me. I, I made this plea to you, God. I, I've done this for you. I pled for you. I'm worried about what you think of everybody around me. I've come to you, lo shema Eli, but but you didn't listen to me. Vayomer Adonai Eli. In fact, God, you said, Rav lecha el tosef devar Eli. Ode. Don't bring this to me anymore. Stop it. It's enough. Hadavar hazeh. Don't keep bringing this up. Um, Allah Rosh Pisga, it's time. Go up to the head, to the to the top of Pisga. The Sa cast your eyes around Yama, the Tzafona, the Temna, the Mizracha to the to the west and to the north and to the south and to the east. The ear the or eh the Enecha and look with your eyes. Key Lo Tavor et Hayarden Hazeh because. Look with your eyes. You know how we say when kids go into a store, look with your eyes, not with your hands? God says that. It's like, stop talking, Moses. Look with your eyes, because you are not going into that land. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu torat emet, Bechaye olam nata batochenu, baruch ata adonai, no ten ha torah. And now it's a special treat um, because you helped me with the aliyah. Griffin, and you can take one to your dad too, he gets the pomegranate pucker. And Griffin, thank you very much. I'm going to have you head down. I will need help in a couple of minutes as I lift and dress the Torah. Um, but before I do, I'm going to share a little bit, both about that Torah portion, but also my blessings as I stand before you. Um, the portion is quite extraordinary because there's Moses and he's 40 years and he's saying, God, let me into the land. Um, there's an incredible commentary and it comes from Rashi. Um, what Rashi says is um, there are two different interpretations. One of them is one you hear from parents all the time. When your, parent, when your kids come to you and say over and again, can't you do that for me, please? Can't I have one? Right? You've heard that before. And what does God say? Rav lecha, stop. You've, it's enough. You've, you've said it plenty of times. I've heard it. It ain't going to happen. Rashi says, yes, that's one of the interpretations. But there's another interpretation that I find so fascinating. Rav Lecha. Don't worry, Moses. There's plenty here. God isn't telling Moses to stop talking about it out of aggravation or annoyance. God says, you don't have to say any more, Moses. You aren't going into the land, but it's not punishment. It's the way things are. But Moses... You've done Rav Lecha. There are so many things that you have done. There is so much merit that you have. Look at the good stuff you have. Go up on the mountain and survey it to the north, to the south, to the east and the west. Look at all of these children of Israel. You've brought them across the, the wilderness. You've led them through all of these challenges. You might not go into the land, but you are sending blessing with you. 
and that is extraordinary. It really made me pause. It really made me think as I stand before you on this, the 20th anniversary of my arrival. I'm only halfway there. My first thought was, I wonder what it's going to be like 20 years from now where I'm going to be, where you all are going to be, what this congregation might look like. Made me think about Moses. What was Moses like after 20 years? How was his singing? Remember, you know, I've never pointed that out before. As much teasing as I get about my, my singing voice, Moses was at a speech issue. In fact, he even said, I can't really advocate for the children of Israel because I don't speak very well. And God sent him anyway. I don't sing very well, and yet God sent me anyway. Just saying, folks. I wonder if at 20 years of the wilderness, he felt more comfortable in front, of a, in front of a community. I wonder if he got to look around and see all of these incredible young people that he connected with, of, of elders that he had learned from. I wonder where he was at year 20 of his journey, knowing that he was halfway to, to that level of the promised land. This is Shabbat Hazon. This is the Shabbat near Tisha B'Av, and it's supposed to be a Shabbat where you're on a precipice, where you're like on, like Rosh HaPizgah, Moses on that precipice of looking backward and forward, that for us here on this Shabbat, we're supposed to look back, we're in the middle of Tisha B'Av, we're at the end of the three weeks of mourning, where there has been, where we're remembering the and the breaking of the tablets, and the exile from Spain. Come tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, and you'll hear all about uh, Tisha B'Av. And now, by the way, we're only about six, we're starting the countdown seven weeks from Rosh Hashanah, from the beginning of the new year. What an amazing place on Shabbat. What an amazing place in our Torah, where I am see in multiple places, in multiple ways, where I'm watching that we stand and we look out and we survey. We're supposed to look around like Moses, and sometimes it's looking at our challenges, but if we get stuck with our challenges, we get left somewhere in the, the meat bar, lost in our wilderness. But then I read that second commentary from Rashi, Rav Lecha, of don't worry. There have been challenges, there have been moments but what you're doing is worthwhile. What you're doing is making an impact. Keep going, Moses. You might not get the people all the way to the promised land, but the Ruach and Koach, the spirit and strength that you carry forward, makes an impact and allows the people of Israel to get to that promised land. I stand before you with two prayers on my lips. One of them is Birkat HaGomel. Birkat HaGomel is it's an interesting text. It's a prayer that you say when you've gotten through a scary journey, when you've recovered from an illness. And I feel like there is something of getting through 20 years of experience that is worth a beer kata gomel. There have been challenges. I've watched people I care about who've passed away. I've watched people who have been frustrated, sometimes with our congregation, sometimes with me. I've seen where things don't always go well, and yet, here we are, still able to be Beth Shalom, a house of wholeness, harmony, and peace, still able to do extraordinary things. And so I am thankful that even with the challenges of life, even with the growing pains, you might have noticed, I was young when I got here. I was 27 or 28, and despite my enthusiasm, I kind of had no idea what I was really doing. But this community has let me learn and grow just as our congregation has grown. And I am so appreciative that I get the chance to realize I've been on this journey and I've made it to this place. Baruch atadonai, rohinu melech haolam, hagomel hayavim tovim, shagama'oni kol tovah, kol tov. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, who rules the universe. You have shown me goodness beyond my merit, and you have bestowed your favor upon me like you bestowed it upon my ancestor, Moses. As I say that word, 
realizing what 20 years means, and I say those prayers, what 20 years means in all of the ups and the downs and the challenges and the success, how sweet it really is. When I think of all the bar and bat mitzvah students and the weddings and the baby namings, even, yes, the funerals, saying goodbye to people, the number of pomegranate puckers that I have given out, the number of times that I've got to stand here on this bima and bless my own children and send them off to the world, how extraordinary that is. When I stood here 20 years ago, I don't think I could have imagined any of it. It is awesome. Baruch Adonai, Rohinu Melech HaOlam, Shehechianu, Vekiyamanu, Vehigianu, Lazman HaZeh. Praised are you, Adonai, our God, monarch of time and space. God, you have given me life. You have sustained me on this incredible journey as a human being, with my wife and my kids, with my family around me, but also this incredible community. You have sustained me, you have given me life, and allowed me to arrive at this special, sweet, and incredible moment. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.